the mula nakshatra falls in the sign of sagittarius you got to remember sagittarius onwards right up till pisces are all zodiacs ruled by jupiter or saturn <clears throat> this in and of itself gives a very heavy load of karma or in terms of duty in terms of teaching in terms of external world manifestations so we are talking about career paths mula means the root mula means digging through the lies to get to the truth so it's a very aggressive nakshatra in terms of finding the truth in terms of research in terms of even spiritual quest so let us see what this nakshatra brings us let's first see the deities and then get into the ascendants each one of the ascendants right hey there beautiful people welcome to my channel light of elentia progressive astrology conscious astrology conscious co-creation where this is all about how do we consciously understand our birth charts how do we use this ancient science of vedic astrology to sort of chart our course in life in career relationships etc in a conscious way rather than in an unconscious way living out our karmas basically this is all there is to it and i will cover things like uh, phases of the moon new moon full moon eclipse predictions also in my own way my content is best viewed on tablets on laptop computers desktops that kind because i bring up sort of landscape format of presentation because it's best viewed as landscape on a big screen so that you can take screenshots and use it as a study material this is more like a study astrology exploration open exploration okay if you like my content please consider donation on the link below it will help me encourage me to make more for you better products for you and it will help me maintain my little channel on the web yeah all the content on this channel is available on these podcasts which is listed below you can go to the podcast it's free for you you can distribute it you can understand it and listen to it at your own pace okay thank you for all your likes shares and subscribes once again deeply appreciate it and let's get into the material now so if you remember these are the deities which are given in the introduction to the you know deed and chart and how to read it in the first one first video in the playlist you can look it up but just to recap the deities are the archetypes of energies which a person will have which they bring to the profession in the deed and chart now mind you these deities or these archetypes are only meant for deed and chart not so much for d1 chart okay forget the natal chart for the time being only the shamsha the 10th divisional chart 0 to 3 degrees leadership 3 to 6 degrees strong work ethic determined people 6 to 9 degrees yama discipline strong sense of responsibility 9 to 12 competitive spirit 12 to 16 excellent communication skills other things are mentioned i'm quickly recapping 15 to 18 degrees they are very dynamic and flexible quickest to adapt 18 to 21 degrees is more of financial wealth astute sensitivity right accountants kind of 21 to 24 degrees is ability to find purpose and meaning in life this can again once again apply to all kinds of professions mind you just because you're in the medical field doesn't mean you're stuck in hospitals or clinics all the time you might be able to bring a higher meaning like dr hegde in india right he's bringing a higher meaning to medical science 24 to 27 degrees is intellectual capability and innovative thinking 27 to 30 degrees is stability and long lasting success so mind you all of these 3 degrees and 10 divisions in the d10 chart in the career chart are very important to consider so any planet or point in those particular degrees will have a propensity will have a drive in that particular direction that's all it means it will have that quality okay this is very crucial to understand <coughs> so you should understand this when you determine the qualities of the planet in a detailed chart now let's see pushya nakshatra what it brings to the table so there you have it the d10 mula nakshatra's talents and abilities okay so 19th nakshatra 
it begins the journey of the last nine nakshatras which finishes up till 27 in Revati, right? What are the talents and abilities that Mula Nakshatra can have? What is their career path? What career path in this sense is what talents and abilities they bring to the table for each one of the ascendants because the Mula Nakshatra changes from house to house for every ascendant naturally. First one on the list is spiritual and philosophical pursuits. This is as Sagittarius as you can get, ruled by Jupiter. They may excel in spiritual and philosophical fields. They may thrive as spiritual teachers, gurus, philosophers, astrologers even, med- meditation instructors or in roles that involve guiding others on their spiritual path. For that, you got to watch for planets Jupiter, Ketu and Moon placements because Ketu is the one which brings in the wisdom from the past life. Ketu is the one which drives moksha forward. Okay. Although in an unconventional way, but that's the way the old tradition is broken. Spirituality, true spiritual path is never realized through traditional means. You can note that. It is not by following the doctrines and ritualistic rules and procedures that each one of these mainstream faiths have gone on for thousands of years. That's just a rule book to maintain some order in the society, but that's not spiritual quest. We know this. <clears throat> Jupiter, Ketu and Moon are required. Jupiter, why? Because it's ruled by Jupiter. It has the power. Jupiter shines in Mula Nakshatra. It's a ninth house. It's the traditional guru themselves. And Moon, why do we consider Moon? Because Moon is the planet which gives the emotional connect. Okay. Research and analysis is the second one, like a career path. Why research and analysis? Mula Nakshatra. Mula means the root, to get to the root of something, some subject. They may excel in research oriented professions. They may thrive as scientists. Now we're talking mainstream scientists, investigators, researchers, analysts, or in roles that involve delving into complex subjects and unveiling new knowledge. This is mainstream scientific area, folks. We mainstream engineering, mainstream medical, mainstream science, mainstream, whatever it is. Okay. When we talk of research and analysis. In this case, we need to look for Jupiter, Mercury and Rahu's placement. Why? Because Rahu is good for the research oriented. Rahu wants to dig deep to find out whatever is there in the mainstream. Think Rahu means mainstream external material manifestations because Rahu is the Bhoga Karaka. It wants to go and achieve stuff in the external world. Ketu is Moksha Karaka, so it wants to go internal. Okay, these are two diametrically opposite forces. You can see my Rahu Ketu series if you want to know more. Okay, next profession for Mula is law and justice. Legal professions. Ninth house is also for the legal profession, Sagittarius. They may thrive as lawyers, judges, legal advisors, human rights activists. Mula Nakshatra is an activist kind of a person, right? They want to bring positive change which is truly spiritually based in the society. Okay? Human rights activists or in roles that involve upholding justice and advocating fairness. Why fairness is Jupiter? And in this case, fairness becomes Mr. Saturn. Saturn is all about dharma. It wants to do the right thing. And for the people, people oriented. Human rights activists, Saturn. Saturn Rahu and Mars. Why? Mars is needed for some degree of aggression which is needed for legal profession. Lawyers have to fight it out in the court. Writing and publishing is another field. They may excel in writing and publishing fields. They may thrive as authors, journalists, editors, content creators or roles that involve written communication and storytelling. You've got to watch for planets. <clears throat> Mars, Saturn, Rahu and Mercury for that. The combination gives everything, right? Travel and exploration. Ninth house is also the house of long distance travels. Mula Nakshatra falls in the house of Sagittarius in the ninth house. Traditional ninth house. 
they may excel in professions that involve exploration and adventure right they may thrive as travel writers tour judges vlogs these days vlogs is a big thing adventurers photographers or in roles that allow them to discover and share new horizons these are the travelers of our world right and the and the profession travel guides vloggers who go around the world shooting bringing us lovely pictures lovely videos posting on youtube we know so many of them last one is healing and alternative medicine by the way for travel and exploration you got to look for planets jupiter venus and moon for the healing and alternative medicine kind of professions they may thrive as alternative medicine practitioners herbalists energy healers or in roles that involve promoting well-being through natural means alternative healing modalities <clears throat> Now, when you think alternative healing, again think of Ketu. Ketu in the houses of healing, especially if it's in sixth house, fifth house, okay, eighth house or twelfth house, it becomes a very healing, alternative healing modality kind of a profession. So you got to watch for planets Jupiter, Moon, and Ketu, aspecting one another. Ketu, Rahu, both have fifth and ninth aspects, just like Jupiter. So watch for that. Now let us see how this plays according to the ascendant nakshatra. Each one of the Mula nakshatras. Okay. For the Aries ascendant, Mula nakshatra falls in the traditional ninth house, as you see, right? House of travels, working, etc. So it can be any one of these professions, but let's see the ascendant. Aries ascendant has three nakshatras Ashwini, Bharani, and Kritika. So you see there, Ashwini is more of a leadership kind of a thing. Law and justice comes to mind. They can become law and justice relating kind of professions. Bharani is also legal profession. Yes, definitely. Research and analysis. Yes, definitely also Bharani's principle. Because Mula is now falling in the ninth house. Kritika Nakshatra is more like a management guy, but it can also become healing and alternative medicine because Kritika loves to cut it can become like a acupuncturist also yeah for the Taurus ascendant Mula Nakshatra falls in the 8th house 8th house is for secrets 8th house is for research and analysis 8th house can also be for healing and alternative medicine so let's go back to the ascendant for some guidelines Kritika, Rohini and Mrikshirsha are ascendant nakshatras in Taurus for a detailed chart Always pay attention to the deities also, by the way. For Kritika, it might be more like healing and alternative medicine. Yeah. Research and analysis. Yes, Kritika is a very discerning kind of nakshatra. It can be also spiritual and philosophical pursuits, research and analysis. Not so much spiritual philosophical pursuits, more of research and analysis. Rohini, it will be more like travel and exploration because eighth house is the house of change. House of movement. Travel involves constant movement, constant change. Right? You're never in one place at any time. So Rohini might want to do more of that kind of a role. Mrikshisha, on the other hand, is a thinker, research and analysis. Investigator, scientist, that kind of a research and analysis. For the Gemini ascendant, Mula Nakshatra falls in the seventh house, more or like a business partnership. Seventh house is the house of business partnership. Writing and publishing comes to mind because writing involves some degree of partnership, right? Writing in partnership with someone, articles, journalists. So that profession could be there. Let's go to the ascendant. Mrikshir Shah will be more of a researcher. Yes, research and analysis because Mrikshir is constantly hunting for new ideas. Ardra Nakshatra wants to dig deep, so it will again be about research and analysis. Ardra is very good in research and analysis. This could be another engineer-like profession. Punarvasu, on the other hand, is more business-like. Travel and exploration comes to mind if Mula Nakshatra is there, because business, like a tourism industry, Okay, tours and travels, that kind of a thing. Package tours, travels these days, especially post the pandemic, it's a big thing business 
For the Cancer Ascendant, Mula falls in the 6th house. 6th house is a house of debts, it's a house of disease, it's a house of legal fights and battles. Do you see that here? Of course. We see law and justice, legal professions might be good there. Writing and publishing, so-so, not so much. Travel and exploration, possible. It requires constant movement. It's a house of daily work. Healing and Ayurvedic medicine, alternative medicine, like Ayurveda, also possible. Let's go to the ascendants. Punarvasu, Pushya and Ashlesha. So if those are the ascendants possibilities in a cancer, for Punarvasu, it might be more like law and justice. Punarvasu is driven by Jupiter. And this being a ruler of Jupiter, there's a strong possibility these people might become lawyers and legal advisors, kind of. <clears throat> they may even go into research in Pushya, especially in Ashlesha, sorry. In Ashlesha, it will become digging deep and in like more or less the same theme as Mula. Going deeply into a subject, certainly research and analysis, these people might become scientists, researchers, analysts of different kinds. In Pushya Nakshatra, it is more like teaching. So it might be about writing and publishing, editors, content creators, journalists, that kind of a profession. Because that also involves daily work. For a Leo Ascendant in D10, Mula Nakshatra falls in the fifth house, as you can see there, of creativity, creative intelligence, speculative markets, that kind of a thing. But Mula is not interested in any one of those things. Mula in the fifth house becomes all about digging deep. Research and analysis comes to mind. Research requires a lot of intelligence. See Jupiter, Mercury and Rahu. So it requires a lot of intelligence. But let's go to the ascendants for some help. Magha Nakshatra, Purva Falguni and Uttra Falguni. Purva Falguni and Uttra Falguni will have somewhat similar characteristics all Purva and Uttra series do so Purva Falguni Uttra Falguni we might be more into travel and exploration the fifth house also loves to travel romantic in nature love romance that's also a thing travel is basically a romantic profession right travel writers tour guides adventurers photographers that can be a profession for Purva and Uttra Falguni for Magha Nakshatra, it's more power oriented, so it will be more about law and justice. These people might become good lawyers, Magha, because it stands for leadership, Magha. So leadership in the form of judges, in the form of top judges of a country, like the high court judges, supreme court judges, that kind of a thing. Okay, that's the possibility for the Leo ascendant in D10 and those planets in Mula Nakshatra. For the Virgo ascendant, <coughs> Mula falls in the fourth house. More of home, house, real estate, heart matters. So it might be more to do with writing, publishing, I would think, research and analysis, sort of spiritual and philosophical pursuits, definitely. Spiritual and philosophical pursuits is more about the heart, not about the head. <coughs> Travel and exploration within the homeland, yes. Healing alternative medicine, yes, definitely possible. Let's see the ascendants. Uttra Falguni Nakshatra will be more of travel and exploration, like we saw earlier. Hasta Nakshatra has to do with more with writing and publishing the hand, right? Writing and publishing involves the hand, even metaphorically speaking, even if you type. Authors, journalists, editors, content creators, that sort of a thing. Parhasta. For Chitra, it will be more of what would we put at Chitra and Mula. Writing research and analysis comes to mind. Investigators, scientists, right? Scientists is more of a thing. For Chitra Nakshatra, that's for the Virgo Ascendant in D10. For the Libra Ascendant, Mula falls in the third house. Third house is a little aggressive house. It's a house of competition. Mars shines there. But Mula is all about researching and analysis. So research analysis first comes to mind. Let's see the ascendants. Chitra, Swati and Vishakha. Vishakha will be more of law and justice. I would think law and justice, legal professionals. 
Swati is very individualistic, so it will be a research and analysis because research and analysis, if you think about it, does involve some degree of unique individual perspective and a brilliant mind, both of which Swati has. Chitra, on the other hand, would be softer ones, travel professions, travel writers, tour guides, third houses, anyway, the house of short travels, like ninth house is the house of long distance travels. For the Scorpio ascendant, now Mullah came in the second house of wealth, earning wealth, of a value system. Let's see the ascendants of Scorpio, Vishakha, Anuradha and Jeshtha. Vishakha would be more like legal and law and justice, legal professions, lawyers, judges. Even Jeshtha would be legal professions very strongly. Making your money, making your wealth through legal professions because second house is the house of wealth. Research and analysis also can be there, but that is more of Anuradha. Writing and publishing can also be Anuradha because speech, this second house is the house of speech. So they might be good talkers, podcasters, emotional connect like Larry King, right? He was very popular because he could make a emotional connect with people with his hosts, with his guests, he was the host. I don't know, I'm still not out of sleep. Okay, so that was Scorpio Ascendant. Let's see the next guy, Sagittarius in the Ascendant itself. For the Sagittarius Ascendant in D10, Namula lands in the Ascendant itself. So all these professions are possible. No matter which profession you take, you will bring 80% or more of these talents and abilities in your profession. You may be an engineer, doctor, lawyer, you may be a travel guide, research analyst, you may be a writer, journalist, right? You may be an adventurer, photographer, you may be a healer, <coughs> healing practitioner, etc. But you will bring these talents of Mula. Okay, so you got to look for these planets and points placement in the other nakshatras, probably in the other houses and come to a sort of a consensus opinion on things before you take a call. Okay. For the Capricorn ascendant, now Mula has gone in the 12th house. So what are the possibilities? Now we have different ascendants. Uttarashada, Sh uh, Shravana and Dhanishtha. Uttarashada is more of victory legal professions legal professions abroad international law could be one of them because 12th house is the house of abroad shravana is more of a teacher so it might be more about writing and publishing more about novel writers somebody who works in the background somebody who goes away far away in lonely places and sits and write all these are 12th house aspects going away in isolated places writers do that fiction writers non-fiction writers mula might be more into research and analysis kind of topics maybe digging into controversies digging into con you know conspiracy theories these days that's a big thing okay while Dhanishta is more about music, dance, talents, drama. But in this case, Dhanishta might become a spiritual teacher, a guru, because 12th house is the house of spirituality also. Okay. For the D10 Aquarius Ascendant, we have Dhanishta. Again, it goes into the 11th house, so it's more about collective social media, collective energy, community, all kind of community work. Uh, gains from the speculation stock market which is fifth house but now it is coming to the 11th house more of community social network so it's not so much about spirituality now but mula wants to do research and anal analysis for the collective let's see the ascendants dhanishta will do that shat visha will definitely do uh, research and analysis maybe even writing and publishing but like a journalism for newspapers because that's a mass media these days websites, these days YouTube. For Purva Bhadrapada, it might be more of travel and exploration. It could also be, no, it can't be healing an alternative because it's one on one, right? 11th house is the group energy, so no, that will not figure in. Travel and exploration, yes, like a tour guide, tourism, travel and tourism industry might be one of their thing, okay? For the Piscean Ascendant, 
we have Uttra Padrapada Revati and Purva Padrapada. Uttra Padrapada and Purva will both probably in Mura Nakshatra, which happens to be 10th house, now becomes very important because it's the 10th house is the house of karma, is the house of career. They could become more of lawyers in this case. Uttra Padrapada and Purva Padrapada could become lawyers, yes. Not so much about writing, more about Travel and exploration could be another one of their forte there if the planets are in Mula Nakshatra. For Revati, it might be more of healing and alternative medicines. You got to look for Jupiter, Moon, and Ketu for that, like we discussed earlier. It could also be research and analysis. Revati is not so much interested in research and analysis. No, it could be more of healing and alternative medicine there. So let's wrap this up. You got to look for planets and points. Start with the ascendant, the ascendant angle. Remember the angle of deities we spoke of. Angle is very important. The three to see, zero to three, three to six, six to nine, all those angle and the governing archetypes. <coughs> That's important. Then you got to look at the cusp of that ascendant, whichever planet and point is nearest. And then you got to look at that nakshatra, because I'm making all the 27, just go through any one of them and then try to figure out what is the governing direction of your career okay next one after this after mula comes purva ashada let's discuss that next we might take episode